in total? The whole pe- presentation. How long was uh, it? An hour. An hour. Yeah. 
Okay. Oops. Welcome, everybody. I'm just going to sit here for now. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Ron Silver. I am the producer and interim director of New Music New College, and I welcome and thank you all for coming to our artist conversation. And before it begins, I have to take attendance. Um, don't worry, the questions I'm asking you do not mean that an FBI agent will visit your home and look for classified information. But would you please raise your hand if your permanent address, and that's whatever you call that, is within Sarasota County. One, two, three, four. If your permanent address is within the state of Florida but outside Sarasota County, would you raise your hand? And if your permanent address is outside Florida but within the United States, would you raise your hand? Oh, we love tourists. I did. Um, anybody from outside the United States? I know not because I've counted all of you, but you know, anybody wants to raise their hand twice, you're welcome. Okay. Um, so, this is our artist conversation for the wonderful pianist behind me, Kathleen Sapovi. Um, this is not her first rodeo at New Music New College. We are thrilled to have her back. And for our artist conversations, um, we like to begin pretty much straight away with having an artist play something, and then we'll talk afterwards. So, we're not going to tell you anything about what you're about to hear. And if Kathy would just wait till I get back, behind the mixing board to make sure everything's okay, we'll be in. Thank you. 
Thank you. So, and I'm only using this for our wonderful YouTube viewers. Um, that was your average piece of piano music. I, does anyone have any reactions, responses, observations, questions? You young man. What is all that waving around and doing? <laughs> <laughs> A composer in the audience, so don't trust him, said, what, are, what does all that waving around do? Well, well, um, first of all, the waving around is with this hand, um, which has a glove on it. And um, the glove was holding in place this little device, which is called the MUJIC. It's like magic and music, if you put the two words together. And it's a trademarked item. It was developed by a violinist turned composer uh, turned sound artist named Mari Kimura. And um, uh, so she's been spreading it around and give, giving them to people and selling them to people. Hello. Welcome. Great to see you. Uh, and it's a little device that if you use the program, uh, she uses the program Max, which is a way of live instruments uh, conversing with computer sounds, um, you can use this device to alter sounds. Basically, if you put it somewhere near the laptop um, with this program. And it's very nice because it's very portable and it can be used, it can be used by pianists. She herself is a violinist. She developed it for herself. And um, it, it's also been used by dancers and uh, so the, an art exhibit used it, too. And I was thinking that maybe today uh, you might want to come up and take a look at it. And she has a little demo. You can come and see what the uh, screen looks like that I was looking at, that I was watching. And I, uh, there's also a little demo that you can hear the sounds, and you can try it out yourself. And it can, you can just use it like this, but I can't play the piano and do that. So <laughs> that's why the glove. And uh, so by waving my hands, I've discovered ways that it can alter the sound. I mean, probably some of you could hear it. When I went to one side, it would go, it would get slow and kind of drag down, and then it would get very agitated. And certain ways, I turn my hand and everything. So does that answer your question? <laughs> well, uh, before I ask for more comments, I, I wanted to throw in an observation, which is I and I have seen Ms. Zapovi <laughs> do this piece before because we've been working. Uh, but I still was wondering, when are you controlling the sound and when is the sound controlling your gesture? And I couldn't tell. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I can't really tell either, actually, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and I, I know, I kind of know certain things that it, it will do if I do the right thing. But I find the more I play the piece, the more ideas I get about exactly how am I going to alter that part of the piece. And um, different, different sections, like I can see when it goes from section to section. I know what section of the, sh uh, oh, who knows what the piece was? It was based on a traditional old-fashioned piece. Who knows what it is? Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> it's, we, um, it's a Chopin waltz, C-sharp minor. And uh, it came about because she and I were having conversations. I'd wanted a, her to write me a piece. And we had a conversation about a piece. You know, what's a piece that you like a lot? And I said, I I've always been really attracted to this waltz. I think it has a kind of hysteria to it that's really attractive. And um, so she made this piece as a, you know, it's a sort of almost like a nostalgia thing for me. It's like I'm playing it and thinking, oh, this is like how I played at one point in my life a long, long time ago. And, oh, but it's taken off in all these other directions, and here it is. But then it keeps coming back in, and, but the machine keeps wanting to take it over and make it go crazy and everything. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, so Steve was uh, saying that he loved at the end when Kathy was making these gestures, um, like, come on, hurry up. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like that, too, where the gesture, yeah. the musical gesture really captures a, a verbal gesture. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to distill that for the YouTube yeah. audience as, <laughs> as um, kind of post, it's kind of, di okay, a humanist via post-humanist dialogue, not via, but against, you know, post-humanist dialogue, and now you can respond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. It's re it's really interesting. Um, for me, I really love the walking away from the piano, and um, I mean, it feels very human to me. But I guess in a way, it's not because you're detached from an instrument, and it's just sort of like out in the air and everything. And yet, it feels very human. Maybe because I love the idea of getting up and going around like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I feel that way. Uh, it also, I feel that way because to some extent, I mean, there's fixed material in, in the recorded part. And, oh yeah, I know that's, that's going to happen then, and it, it's going to make me quit also. And um, it's interesting because I'd asked for a piece that was five minutes. I forget why it came up. I almost never, by the way, so for the record, I want to say that I almost never tell a composer how long a piece should be that they write for me. Um, but I forget why that happened. It came up because she was going to be able to get a performance of the piece if it was really short and if it could stay five minutes or under. So she did, she did it, and it's like five minutes, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Some composer asked, has anybody ever written a really, really long piece for you? <laughs> Are you on the payroll? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I one time asked a composer for a piece, and I, he said, is it okay if it's long? And, and you know, I said, oh, yeah, it'd be really great if you... I said, and, yeah, don't worry about it. It can, it can be long. So he wrote me a piece that is two hours long. Wow. And um, it's, I love to show it to my students because they complain if a piece is two pages long. And <laughs> so then I whip out my iPad and I show them this piece and I say, well, look at this piece. It's 213 pages long. And, and it's hard. It's not like a spacey 213 pages or something. It's just like relentlessly difficult. Um, so yes. Oh, should I tell who it is? Or, yeah. Um, some of you may know him, Dylan Mattingly. It's a piece called um, Achilles um, Dreams of Ebbets Field. Uh, and some, something I pass every Sunday on my long run is the former Ebbets Field, which is now a luxury high rise. So are the, are the repeat marks at the end of that piece optional? Yeah, <laughs> and there are repeats in it. <laughs> Well, that's the cheap way of making something two hours, as the composers out here will yeah. know. So you write four bars of music and put a lot of repeats in. And yeah, eventually exactly. <laughs> but I must say there are very few repeats. Um, and it, yeah, anyway. Any other? Any um, other? Yeah. yeah, Diane. So the, the comment, just for YouTube, the comment was that, uh, as uh, Kathy had said, it was the, it reminded her nostalgic, uh, like nostalgia of her former, the former self playing uh, pieces of years ago, and Diane was saying that she heard ghostly sounds in there, so it was the ghost. 
<laughs> oh, very cool. Very cool. I wonder, did I sound ghostly? My part I was playing live, and or, and did the, the recorded part? Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So I have a question. The, yep. the recorded part, mm -hmm. um, that's not you, correct? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me put it this way. We've been intending to have me record it. Yeah. Um, I'm being I'm being coy about this because it is a recording of of a record a commercial recording. Uh -huh. um, oh, I should offer some. I, I offer a prize to anybody who knows <laughs> who it is who is playing, and it's somebody that you might know. Um, but it it was intended to be me, but we were on a tight deadline, and she had this recording, and so <laughs> it's not. Well, um, it's, it, it's, it, it's interesting, and I, I asked that not because I have this incredible insight as much as you had said to me at one point when we were working on this, I guess, yesterday. Was it yesterday or earlier today? I have no idea what day it is. I, I it was earlier it today. It earlier feels today. like yesterday. Yeah, because yeah. you arrived yesterday in a very late flight, thank FAA. Um, but um, uh, you had said something, uh, does it sound like an old recording? And what I notice is, oh, yeah. and part of the, in part of the playback, there is a, there's a click that happens, and um, and I presume that I mean that's got to be intentional from the composer's part because you hear it repeatedly, and it almost sounds to me like like a vinyl record, you know, with a mm. with a pop on it or something, um, and uh, so it does to me start really feel like okay, this is like an Edison. You know, <laughs> Edison disc. Or That's so Nick interesting. I, you're going to have to show me where you hear that, okay. and I, I would like to hear. Yeah. That's that's very cool. Well, it's it's an old recording. I don't know if it's that old, but it's um, it, it's because we're we're being broadcast right live, so I can't yeah. say who it is. But yeah. but I would love to hear if anybody wants to come up to me afterward and take a guess <laughs> as to who it is. <laughs> and I will record it someday for the, for that. Any other um, observations or, or questions? And if not, people should come up and look at the device. Sure, or do you want to, yeah, or we or can continue. You, do you want to move on the second piece and do this after? What would work for you? Maybe we'll move to the second piece, then if there's time, okay. stay around, come so, on. So um, um, Kathleen uh, has graciously agreed to my demand that um, she have a second piece ready. Uh, to play. So like the first, we're not going to tell you anything about it. And um, afterwards, you can chat about it while I get off the stage. And I'm Mute the music. That's a good, that's a good piece title, Mute the Music. Am I allowed to tell the title? Oh, sure. The title of the piece is A Face in the Crowd.
Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought the first question you were going to ask me was never mind. I, 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 just, I was anticipating. I was giving him. See, I'm, I'm now. It's a post-human. I'm controlling what he says. <laughs> you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to flash more lights on your hands. In the before, yeah, <laughs> before I can become post-human. No, I wanted to ask people out here what what you thought. Any any reactions to that? I mean, I've got some, but yours are more interesting than mine. Did, did the man in the pink shirt mm. like it? <laughs> I wouldn't trust him. He doesn't look trustworthy to me. You, young lady, you look uh, like you yeah, wanted yes. to. So uh, our, our, to, to, to try to summarize that, uh, Arlene was talking about how the, the loud sections, the clusters, are startling and, and really kind of jolt you out of these pretty lyrical sections. And hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so, so Steve was mentioning that um, when Kathleen was playing this, uh, the, it, was, it was even more impressive because you didn't get a warning uh, watching them, watching her, uh, of, okay, now she's going to do that. It was just mm -hmm. like, it just happened, um, which is very Yeah, impressive. and the, the challenge is not to take extra time also, <laughs> to not show you're going to do it and to not start yeah. adding beats and... So, so Miriam and and uh, then Laurie. Well, I, can I pick up on the, the two emotional registers you were uh, bringing up, Joe? Um, but I was still turning that title over in my head to some of the younger kids, and so part of it is just that whole notion of nostalgia and thinking it's not just about old people reliving the story of the film and how they're proud, right? I mean, this is the classic mm -hmm. moment in the film. You recognize that. I mean, I don't think anybody says, "Here's the murderer." <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it doesn't work the whole way, but it's just but that, that double register thing is, is just the really interesting thing that these folks do. I'm, I'm glad you picked up on it. Yeah, like they each have their own kind of narrative. And, yeah. And, and Lori? Yeah, I. So I'm going to try to distill that for you two. Um, um, we were talking about how it, how it, no, that was wonderful. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, going to oaf this up here. Uh, 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 but um, it, 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 for her, was like the, the rhythms of life where your things are going along and then all of a sudden something unexpected and almost violent happens. And then, and I just lost the last part of what you said, which was great, and I just lost it. Yeah. And, 
Yeah, and I, I liked what you were saying about how some of them were more cataclysmic than others, and, and that's also notated. Some of them are more triple forte, and some are just forte and double forte, and different lengths of and registers. And yeah, I thought that was interesting what you were saying about like something can remind you of something awful that happened ten years ago, just walking down the street or something like that. Yeah. So um, I'm, I wanted to make an observation or two because uh, you know yeah. I, I'm here too. Yeah. Um, uh, the 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 first kind of you know violent cluster really again you know, of you know shook me out of there and and then after that what I found was all of those base clusters I was really enjoying them. There's just there's this really rich texture. I mean it's partly that you know I really like this piano mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in that so the sound of what when I was a kid was called banging on the piano, don't bang on the piano. Um, that that I was actually just like, oh, that was great. And I was starting to, um, at a certain point during those more quiet lyrical passages, I was like, come on, I want I want I want I want one of that like crunch again because it just sounds <laughs> just great. Um, and the other thing it brought to mind, especially about the first third or half, was. It, it, the the scene I saw in my head was walking along a city street, a real city like New York, and you're just kind of like, you know, you're in your world, and then like, you know, somebody bumps into you, or you walk past like a doorway that opens and people are screaming, or like somebody honks their horn, or just all of the the violent interruptions that 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 happen as you're you know just just trying to you know go someplace and and mm -hmm. be in your kind of happy space at the time. And these other spaces yeah. impinge on you. But I like the way they sound. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. That's very, thank you. That's really neat. Um, well, I, I, I'd love to hear anything else, but I was going to say something too. Please. Okay. Um, I, I just, no, I'm not going to say anything about my impressions because I probably can't really see it because I'm in it. But. Um, I, I just wanted to say that it was written by Randy Wolf, who's in the man oh. in the pink shirt. And um, it's one of two pieces of his that I'll be doing Saturday night. The other one is, I think, quite different from this. You think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, Ron's heard it because we were playing with it today. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Well, um, uh, just to tell you the origin of the piece, the backstory. It was commissioned um, for a project on, on migration, which is still on, uh, ongoing. And it was inspired by, uh, I come from Portland, Oregon, and every fall, uh, every September, there's a migration of Vox's Swifts um, from Portland down to, I think, Argentina, somewhere down south. And um, they fly over the city, and they think there's a chimney in a school that's in the West Hills. Um, that they think of as a roosting place, and they fly over every night at dusk, uh, but the whole month of September. And one or two of them get the idea that, oh, this would be a good place to roost, and they fly down into it. And then pretty soon, they're going in by the thousands. And uh, it's a spectator sport there. People get picnics and go up. It's in a pretty part of town, and um, they put, get a picnic out on the ground, and they watch them. Uh, go in by the thousands, and you you can look it up on the internet and see it. Um, and somebody was telling me also that the, occasionally they're flying in and trying to get their roosting place, but there are hawks that come along and try to kick them out. And uh, there are people who come and root for the hawks, actually. And um, <laughs> so I, I think the piece was, um, I mean, Randy can agree with this or contradict it. Um, uh, feel free, feel free to come up, and, and uh, but it was it was the individual bird versus the crowd chaos of going into. I mean, the chimney is really not that big. It's um, I mean, it, it's not, not even as big as the piano. I mean, it's like I I don't even know how they get in there. I've seen photographs in there, and they're just. I guess they just fly out eventually. Yeah, and the, when it's light out the next day. And they actually retired the chimney. They don't use it as a fireplace anymore or anything because the birds were using it so much that, that they just take it. Yeah.
No, this B. Yeah, the sort of chaotic nature of them all going in and Uh, the, hawk is, the, the hawk is a recent development. I only heard about it recently. <laughs> so there's going to be a second, a second movement. A, a, a sequel, yeah. <laughs> but now I and and now I understand that those kind of slow glissandi from the on the of those on the, oh, on the high yeah. treble notes. Those 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 sound very much to me like uh, an individual bird flying in. So. Mm. Yeah, and we were always speculating on wh who was the last bird to go in, <laughs> you know, like, bringing up the rear, um, and well, everything. Uh, the piece, the other piece of his I'm playing is called Leadville Pantoum, and a pantoum is a kind of poetic form, which Randy can tell you more details about. And Leadville is a place in Colorado. Um, I guess I can, can I just give a little verbal program note? It it has to do with. Um, sex workers during the, the uh, silver mining rush in Leadville. And I, I've had occasion to go to Colorado since the piece was written. And people who live there have told me a bunch of stories about Leadville. It sounds really interesting. Um, one of the things is it, it has some, a huge Jewish population and maybe the oldest synagogue in Colorado. And, uh, but it, it's quite a town. I mean, a lot of really interesting venues and stuff there. Anyway, I, I don't know. Oh, well, I, 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 my brains go slow, so I was still thinking about the birds. Um, I, I, and, <laughs> and, um, and I just want to mention, because I That's mentioned better. this to you, earlier today, we, we just out in front of this building, there's a, across the street, oh. there's a huge Chinese silk oak tree, I think, it's red flowers, and there were just a ton of birds in there, and I think they were the robins, but I'm not sure. Um, but we've noticed robins going through our neighborhood lately, and they migrate through, so we don't see them all year. Um, but when they come, boy, they come. And there have been times, um, speaking of the last bird in, there have been times when um, they will be in our backyard and around the edge of one of our bird baths, and there will be two or three who are just hovering, waiting for s someone to give them a little space. Uh, so talk about the oh, last really? one there. It's like the first one's getting in, and they're like, "Oh, I got plenty of room." And then you know they push over and everything. And then there are the ones who are like, "Hey, there's no space for me," and they'll just wait until someone <laughs> flies off. Oh and... wow! So it's really a thing. Yeah. So we Yeah. So they let human juices get transferred on basis. And so they're, and I mean, so we're about, so a few weeks there, I was able to graze predominantly, <laughs> filling up the field. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and the the picture that Randy painted of uh, these mm -hmm. you know thousands, millions, however many birds uh, descending on this funnel, this this chimney, put in mind to me murmurations of starlings. It's starlings, I think, um, which are if you haven't seen, there's videos on YouTube where you know tens of thousands of these but all flying, and they create these shapes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea. I know, you know, I've watched, I've watched uh, uh, large birds fly in, in Vs, and the leader will change, um, mm. at, at, you know, at least with some of the birds I've seen down here, um, where they'll be, you know, down at Indian Beach, there'll be a, a, a V of birds, and then, like, a bird will just, like, kind of go off, and somebody else will take, and then, like, 
Some birds just go off one way, and some go with, and some don't. And why is beyond me? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, maybe uh, anyone who wants to come up can yeah. see Kathy's Mujik device. A, a, a oh, sorry, we have a question. Yeah, really. <laughs> No. All those things have been played. You are just late. Yeah. To the... <laughs> yeah, it's a secret now because no, no, we did not discuss anything on the stage. So it was good you brought it up. Um, but come on Saturday because Kathy's going to tell you about these, but she may be lying right now. Okay. Right, and I'm only going to tell you a little bit. Okay. No, I'll, I will tell you. I will tell you that um, this is a snare drum. Yeah, it, oh, it's not turned on right now, but this is a snare drum. It's used in Leadville Pantoum, as a matter of fact. And um, this is a, a bowl, which will be used in my piece. Um, and we, d we realized that they could be somewhere, they both need to be miked. Um, I'm playing, the, I'm not playing the snare drum in the conventional way, so it's not like it's gonna be really loud. <laughs> yeah. Does that surprise you? Um, and uh, but we realized they could both be mic'd by this lovely microphone here. And um, so you'll hear some sounds of water and uh, in my piece, which is called Glacier. And, and that will be a world premiere. And it'll be a world premiere. And... Uh, this is all for me to have headphones and uh, a vocal mic. The um, Leadville Pantoum is based on a poem of a poet named Megan Duffy about Leadville, um, about these workers in Leadville. And uh, it's a, a singing pianist part, which is to say I'm not a singer. But uh, Randy managed to create a vocal part that I can actually do and have fun with it. You're, Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or if they knew about them or had anything to do. And yeah, I really want to. It's an old joke that I think it's going to be some poor old Jew. Yeah. 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 We, we are. I, part of me is thinking you have to tell it now. We are on YouTube. Keep it clean. Uh, I was thinking you have to tell it, and I sort of already think it's funny. <laughs> well, actually, on that note, um, yeah. <laughs> on that note, I'm actually going to go stop the YouTube because I think that um, anyone who wants should come up, and you can show them yeah. the, the music. Yeah, if anybody wants a, to see it, um, that'll be more of a kind do, of. Do you want at. me to? Uh, I can uh, disconnect it and just run it from the microphone here, or do you want me to do that, or? Um, is it turned? I can do that. I'll, I'll, I, I think I've got you muted. I'll just unmute you. It's, just why unmute not, it. Why not okay. leave it the way it is? We'll Sounds leave it great. the way it is. I yeah. may have to kind of set it up again, but come on yeah. up. It, it just takes me a... It's very reliable. It uses, um, for any tech people here, it uses its own Wi-Fi network. And um, it's Marie Kimura, who's very ingenious about these things. She's found it's much more reliable than Bluetooth uh, for performances. Um, so anybody, anybody is welcome to come up. And